Big news guys, interest rate drops are coming as big banks reduce their rates on fixed home loan products, signaling relief for Aussie borrowers. This is a narrative I've seen over the last few weeks, and I feel like it's the sort of thing that will continue to grow as industries like mine and real estate start to use it as a selling point. But with any narrative that's being pushed onto us, we should be questioning where the truth lies in this. Yes, it signals some bank think rates are coming down. Does that mean it's going to happen? Here in January this year, AMP economist Shane Oliver predicted three rate cuts starting June this year. And here Westpac and CBA predicted rate cuts that would be here already. Today I'm going to look into some ABS data to see how likely it is that interest rates are on their way down. First off, my name is Will Bell. I've run my mortgage brokerage down here in Melbourne for the last 13 years. The reason I post content is to help people make it financially. Over the period of time that I've been in business, it has become increasingly harder for the average Australian to make it financially. Generally speaking, that is have a family, buy a house, pay it off, then have enough for a modest retirement. This is creating a bunch of problems. For example, we're at a point now where we as a nation are not having enough kids to replace us. Therefore, we need to immigrate a lot of people here and create the demand in the economy. Granted, this is not just an Australia problem, but it shouldn't be a reason to ignore it and create all these other policies which just keep creating more problems. Our state and federal government's policies on things like job creation has led us to where we are now. Before I go further into my opinions on this, let's go over some of the data. You can see here that the inflation rate as of June 30 is 3.8%, which is still above the target rate of 2 to 3%. The trend shows that it's coming down and it's looking like that trend will continue. The one thing that could put an inflationary impact on the rate of inflation is tax cuts we had from June 30 this year, although that's not clear because the spending of those tax cuts will happen over a period of time. It won't just happen all at once. Unemployment is rising steadily, although still considerably low in comparison to the six years prior to the shock of 2020. Furthermore, you can see here that the jobs market has been buffered by government spending. Jobs have increased substantially since the pandemic, which demonstrates the level of government spending. What is not shown in this graph is that the market sector, which is also benefited from government spending, is now not creating any jobs. So as of June, the government are creating all of these jobs. Many banks have cut their fixed rates between 0.3 and 0.7%, front running what they expect to be interest rate drops coming soon. When it comes down to the individual level, we can see that disposable income is going backwards, which is why things have been particularly tough in recent times. We can see that consumption has reduced to a crawl. However, we can see that wage growth is now 4.1%, which is higher than the inflation rate of 3.8%. I'm going to summarize all of this data. The data can be read in different ways. So if the data is telling you something different, please let us know in the comments. This data and a whole lot more is released by the RBA and I'll put a link in the comments. Big banks reducing their fixed rates tell you the market thinks the reserve bank cash rate is coming down. Generally speaking, this would be enough for me, but I don't agree that it's the most likely scenario. I could be wrong here guys, so it's not financial advice. I could see rates coming down if US markets start tanking. That would cause large businesses here to brace for impact and start cutting expenses. One of the biggest expenses for most companies are the people they hire. If unemployment starts going up here, then sure, interest rates can come down. Problem is we have stronger inflation and low unemployment. Granted, it's looking like inflation is coming back into target range, but the concern in the RBA's mind is going to be the inflationary effect of dropping rates with low unemployment. I've said this plenty of times before, people will not stop spending if they believe they can lose their job and just get another one tomorrow. And based on the current data, there's still jobs being created, even though it's all by the government. People will stop spending if they fear they will lose their job and not have any income for a prolonged period of time. But that's not what's happening at the moment. This means interest rates, in my mind, are unlikely to come down any meaningful amount. In terms of the property market, it means more of the same. There is the risk of people having to put properties on the market causing a crash. My feeling is that it hasn't happened yet and there's still strong demand. I mean, all of the properties that come onto the market, they're getting bought. Yes, the turnaround times on selling the properties are longer than what they were. The demand is getting soaked up. 
I know there's a lot of people calling for the property Ponzi scheme to end, but I think as time goes on, I think that's less likely to happen in, in how a lot of these guys think it's going to end. I think that over a longer period of time, we'll have more problems with inflation that actually favors most property holders if they can manage their debt burdens. I'll be creating some content soon around that, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Cheers.